Hello, I'm Chris Barclay, the product manager for Wavelength. Thank you for joining me today to discuss how Wavelength enables developers to deliver applications that require ultra low latency to users and devices on 5G mobile networks. In today's session, I'll describe why we built Wavelength, use cases for why developers are using Wavelength, and dive into the developer experience. AWS has dozens of regions that enable developers to build applications that provide low latency globally and a comprehensive set of solutions for building edge applications. Wavelength, Outpost, and Local Zones all bring AWS services to more places with the same experience and benefits that developers are used to. Wavelength, however, is unique in that it's designed to enable developers to build ultra-low latency applications by extending AWS infrastructure, services, APIs, and tools into 5G networks. Developers can take existing applications and extend them to Wavelength, or build new applications using AWS services like EC2 and EKA. Now, why should you care about low latency access to compute? We all encounter examples of latency in our daily lives, such as an entrance to a congested expressway. And even when there's lots of bandwidth, such as open lanes on a highway with no congestion, the number of hops or distance traveled matters. Emerging interactive applications like game streaming industrial automation and connected vehicles require more compute and data processing. To solve these problems, developers told us they wanted to bring the cloud to the device. We saw an opportunity to combine the benefits developers have come to love about the AWS cloud, including a broad set of services, pay-as-you-go pricing, and elasticity with the ultra-low latencies and high bandwidth of 5G to create a truly novel experiences. Wavelength brings AWS services to the edge of the 5G network, minimizing the latency to connect to an application from a mobile device. Emerging interactive applications like game streaming and virtual reality require ultra low latencies to end users and devices and consistent quality of service on data flows to deliver the desired experience. The 5G network is up to 20 times faster than 4G and can be used to shrink network latency. However, even with the arrival of 5G, mobile devices still had to cross multiple network hops when connecting to an application over the internet. Before Wavelength, application traffic had to travel from a device to a cell tower, to a metro aggregation site, and then onto the internet before it could access resources running in AWS. These network hops could add tens of milliseconds of latency. Previously, this prevented developers from realizing the full potential of 5G to address ultra low latency use cases. In addition, with Wavelength at the 5G edge, we can now meet the needs of applications that need data processing to happen closer to the device. Using Wavelength makes it possible to avoid buffering on uplinks and downlinks, which is particularly useful for large objects and streaming video data. Wavelength also saves storage and battery power because the data does not need to stay or be processed on the device. For example, from video cameras um, and, and mobile IoT devices are good candidates to be pushed to the edge for fast local processing and to reduce the quantity of data that is sent across the internet. Now, one class of applications with these requirements is inference at the edge. Inference at the edge includes applications like smart factories where sensors can detect quality problems and healthcare for doctor assistants during procedures. Now, one challenge with machine learning applications is system responsiveness, which requires the inference processing application to be close to the end user. And this used to mean that the device needed expensive and power-hungry processors. Additionally, if you needed to update your machine learning model, you had to push out an update to all the devices running your application. Now, 5G and Wavelength provide significantly lower latency and much more bandwidth compared to previous generation mobile networks, allowing you to use the cloud as an extension of your device. For edge applications, this implies you could actually perform inference processing even with HD video in a wavelength zone with real-time responsiveness to the mobile device. By moving the inference processing to the wavelength zone, you reduce power consumption and battery drain on the mobile device. Additionally, you can simplify application updates. If you need to make a change to your training model, you simply update your servers in the wavelength zone instead of having to ship a new version to all the devices running your code. Now, there are many use cases where Wavelength can help. A few highlighted in our launch include healthcare, where AIML-driven video analytics and image matching solutions help doctors speed up diagnosis of observed conditions, 
such as recognizing polyps during colonoscopies. The video streams from medical devices are processed in the wavelength zone, and the response is returned to the medical device for the surgeon to use. Connected cars enable capabilities such as improved road safety. Low latency access to compute infrastructure is needed to run processing and analytics to monitor data from sensors to secure connectivity, in-car telematics, and safety warnings. Wavelength also provides the ultra-low latency needed to live stream high-resolution video and high-fidelity audio, as well as to embed interactive experiences into live video streams. Additionally, video analytics can provide the ability to generate real-time statistics that can enhance live event experiences. Now, Wavelength provides a number of benefits to developers. First, Wavelength brings AWS services to the edge of the 5G network, minimizing the latency to connect a an application from a mobile device. Application traffic can reach application servers running in Wavelength without even leaving the mobile network. This prevents the latency that would result from multiple hops to the internet and enables customers to take full advantage of the advancements of 5G. Customers can now deliver immersive experiences like game streaming to end users on mobile devices. Robots, cars, and other smart devices can make complex decisions that require more computing power than is available in a small form factor. Bringing AWS closer to these devices unlocks these opportunities. Second, you deploy your application to Wavelink Zones, AWS infrastructure deployments that embed AWS compute and storage services directly into telecommunication providers' networks. Wavelink Zones deliver a consistent developer experience across multiple 5G networks around the world, allowing you to build ultra-low latency applications using the same familiar AWS services, APIs, tools, and functionality you already use today. You can deploy portions of your cloud-based application requiring ultra-low latency to Wavelength and then connect seamlessly to the rest of your application and services running in AWS. Third, with Wavelength, you get capacity close to your end users and data. Along with AWS benefits such as no capital costs, pay-as-you-go pricing, and the ability to scale up and scale down on demand. Finally, AWS regions, local zones, and Wavelength expand AWS to deliver ultra-low latency to more locations around the world. You get these same benefits whether end users connect to the internet or over mobile networks, and in the Americas, Europe, Japan, Korea, and more locations to come. Let's talk a little bit about how Wavelength works in a 5G network. The latency of applications deployed to AWS regions depends on where the users are, where the regions are, and the specific paths traversed to reach the application in the regions. The latency typically is on the order of tens of milliseconds if you look across a broad population of mobile users. With compute instances running at a site embedded in the mobile network, this dis network distance is reduced. Since the network path traversed is shorter, and the quality of service is highly controlled in mobile networks, the latency is both predictable and has less jitter, which is important for applications such as gaming and others that require tight synchronization across users. In addition, use cases with high data transfer can process it earlier in the network path, reducing the bandwidth used in the backhaul networks. We're continuing to make Wavelength Zones available to developers and companies in more cities across the U.S. with Verizon. Earlier this month, we rolled out three additional Wavelength Zones with Verizon in Atlanta, New York City, and Washington, D.C. Now developers in those cities, in addition to Boston and the San Francisco Bay Area, can get the benefits of ultra-low latency, mobile edge compute, and 5G to build and deliver new and innovative applications. Now that we've described why we built Wavelength, we'll dive into the developer experience. With Wavelength, you can build applications with services such as Amazon EC2, EBS, VPC, and Amazon ECS and EKS for containers. All the AWS tools continue to work as well. API calls will automatically be logged via CloudTrail, and developers can continue to use familiar and powerful AWS services to manage, secure, and scale their applications, like CloudFormation, identity and access management, and auto-scaling. And you can access AWS services that are running in the region, such as DynamoDB, S3, and others, in the same way as you do in your cloud today. Let's look at some of the concepts of Wavelength Zones. First, once you're opted into Wavelength to use it, 
applications built on Wavelength start with a VPC, just like you use on AWS today. After you create a VPC, you can create subnets in the Wavelength zone, along with route tables, security groups, and other resources that you're familiar with. The zone name is passed into APIs, just like create subnet, similar to how you're doing it today in the region. EC2 instances and Wavelength zones are created in a subnet in the VPC and use the VPC's IP address range. This enables your application components and Wavelength zones to use a secure and high bandwidth connection to access all the resources in the region. A network border group is used to allocate IP addresses on the carrier's network to elastic IPs to be used with the EC2 instances. In this example, you can see that instance Y in the Wavelength zone can connect to instances B, D, and Z over the local VPC network. Existing concepts like transit gateways and VPC peering continue to work, and you can use endpoints for services like S3. With Wavelength, we have introduced a new concept of a carrier gateway. The carrier gateway allows you to have route traffic from a specific location into the Wavelength zone, as well as outbound traffic to the internet. The carrier gateway provides connectivity between your Wavelength zone and the telecommunication carrier's network, including mobile devices on that network. The carrier gateway performs NAT for the EC2 instance's private IP addresses to the carrier IP addresses from a pool that is assigned to the network border group. The carrier gateway NAT function is similar to how an internet gateway functions in the AWS region. Now that we've described how Wavelength uses the same VPC constructs as you're used to in the regions, let's describe how data flows from EC2 instances into Wavelength zones. EC2 instances and subnets in Wavelength zones can connect to EC2 instances and subnets in AZs over a highly available and reliable uh, bandwidth link using the private IP addresses in the VPC. This makes it easy to have some parts of your application run in the region and other parts run in the Wavelength zones. In addition to VPC private IP addresses, you can put a carrier IP address on each EC2 instance. The carrier IP address is on the carrier's network in the specific location. For example, in the Boston Wavelength zone, it's on Verizon's network in Boston. Connectivity to the mobile network goes through the carrier gateway, allowing a device on the carrier's network to connect to the EC2 instance, subject to your security group rules. The carrier gateway also provides egress to the internet so you can connect to the internet resources like GitHub or Git operating system updates. Note that this path is for internet egress and response. Wavelength zones are not accessible from the internet. Now there are two ways to access AWS service endpoints, over the internet or using VPC endpoints. VPC endpoints provide connectivity that does not require EC2 instances to have outbound internet access. And this illustrates the two paths to connect with an AWS service like S3. You can either go over the internet or by using the S3 VPC endpoint using the private DNS name. And here's an example of a VPC route table in a Wavelength zone. You can see the S3 endpoint listed as well as the default routes for the carrier gateway and local VPC traffic. When you're constructing applications, there are a few things to think about. Wavelength zones are designed for applications that need to connect to compute from devices on 5G networks with ultra low latency and applications that need high and consistent data rates from devices on 5G networks to the compute that's running in the Wavelength zone. So AWS recommends that you architect the edge application in a hub and spoke model with a region providing the most scalable, resilient, and cost-effective options for your application components. You can run the application components that are less latency sensitive or that need to persist state, such as databases, training ML models, and backend worker processes in the region. You then run application components that are latency sensitive in the wavelength zone. Let's put this all together to see an actual example of a customer application deployment. A gaming application typically has a game server that runs the game session and does a lot of the real-time processing. These are latency sensitive. Then there are services that maintain the state of the player, which might need to be recovered if the game is paused, and these are not latency sensitive. Then there's the game image that's typically stored in S3 in the regions. 
In such a scenario, the developer will determine where the end users are geographically and decide on where they should deploy the game servers. This could be in one or many wavelength zones. The developer would create a VPC and launch the game server in the wavelength zone and deploy the state service in the region. The image download would then happen from S3. Now with the game server running in the wavelength zone, a mobile device requesting to use this would first reach the service discovery in the region. The service discovery will know all the instances of the game servers running across the wavelength zones and would determine the best instance of the server to connect to. The device would then connect to the application over the 5G network through the carrier gateway. So as you can see, wavelength zones provide compute at the edge with the developer experience the same across AWS regions and wavelength zones, and you're still using EC2 instances and VPCs. But at the same time, it gives you the flexibility of constructing applications that use 5G networks and the regions. To simplify the provisioning process, you can create resources using CloudFormation. This allows you to templatize what is created in each zone, such as subnets, route tables, auto-scaling groups, and so on, to ensure consistency. The new carrier gateway resource can be used during the VPC and subnet creation process. Then you create your application resources in those subnets. You would deploy your template using CloudFormation in the Oregon and Northern Virginia regions. This makes it easy to expand your application as new wavelength zones launch. Now let's look at how Shot Tracker created an application that uses wavelength. Sports fans appreciate the real-time stats that track the live game. Leagues have been instrumenting players and equipment to enable uh, more data that can be used to create custom statistics. This volume of data can create insights, but to make sure it's live with the game, it needs to be processed with ultra-low latency. In the past, this meant it needed to be processed locally. Now this information can be sent to Wavelength for processing and provided to fans direct, directly as well as to teams and broadcasters. The data can be sent to the region to be distributed to other applications and also archived for long-term storage. Let's hear directly from Shot Tracker about what they've done. Hi, my name is Davian Ross and I'm one of the founders and president of DD Sports and our basketball product is called Shot Tracker. Shot Tracker is a sensor-based technology that tracks statistics and analytics, providing real-time data to coaches, broadcast partners, fans, and players, all with sub-second latency. Basketball is constant activity up and down. Latency is so, so, so critical. One thing that we're doing that's really exciting is demoing our shot tracker technology over Verizon 5G and AWS Wavelength. This allows us to see the delta between the traditional process, which is 4G, and this accelerated amplified process that utilizes both 5G and Mac. You can distinctly see the difference in the speed of ball movement. When I think about what 5G and edge computing can do, I think about coaches. I think about them getting access to this video and data anywhere in the facility. It may be in the locker room at halftime or sitting on the bench during the game, all delivered in real time. When you think about being able to take this data and incorporate it into the broadcast, latency is even more important. We're really excited about what 5G and MEC will provide to the market. We've been waiting on this for so long and the time is now. It's finally here. And it will revolutionize the fan experience, the viewing experience, and how we consume data and sports for the rest of our lives. Thank you for coming to our session today. Again, I'm Chris Barclay, the product manager for Wavelength, and appreciate you coming to hear us, as well as uh, hear about our announcement of three new Wavelength zones that we launched today, Atlanta, New York City, and Washington, DC. Please come check us out on aws.amazon.com slash wavelength to try out Wavelength and learn more.